Dave Ramsey started by asking this question. How many of you grew up as I did? Money will not make you happy. Money is not going to solve your problems. It's going to make them bigger and also going to make your opportunities bigger. If you're a generous person, your generosity will go into overdrive. We live in a cause and effect world. What you plant, you will harvest. You will reap what you sow. If you grow stupidity, you will get a crop of desperate and he has done it. If you plant corn, don't be looking for beans to come up. What you put into your life is what you'll get out. So we found that there are 5 things that if you do these things with money over some time, 10 or 15 years from now, you will build a level of wealth 100% of the time. Talking about this is not some sort of prosperity thing, mystical or magical. Ramsey covers these 5 things and they're all common sense. But common sense is so rare now, it's like having a superpower. Now, let's look at the 5. To start with, get on a budget. You have to do a budget on paper on purpose, before the month begins every month. Most people need some way of seeing where their money is going each month. A budget can help you feel more in control of your finances and make saving money for your goals easier. The trick is to figure out a way to track your finances that works for you. Calculate your net income and the foundation of an effective budget is your net income. Track your spending. Tracking and categorizing your expenses can help you determine what you spend the most on and where it might be easiest to save. Decide today to do them. You can decide today that you will start managing money well because you'll keep getting what you've been getting if you keep doing what you've been doing. That is the principle of sowing and reaping. You need to get out of debt. The Bible says the borrower is a slave to the lender. It's real. Think about this. Your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. This is what slavery looks like. This week, they came out with new data that shows that the average car payment in America today, according to the National Auto Dealers Association, is $499, dangerously close to $500. You take $500 a month and invest it from age 30 to 70 in a decent growth stock mutual fund, and you'll have $5.6 million. That's what a car payment costs you. You are making somebody rich, but not you. Right, here's the deal. Think about this, what if you had no payments? Can't even get your head around that. You're in charge of your life. It is the only one that will work, and that's what changes. So how do you get out of debt? Well, you have to decide not to borrow anymore. Once you are out of debt, you must be careful to foster high-quality relationships. What's that got to do with that money? Everything. There is a massive correlation between those that build wealth and those they hang around with because you become who you hang around with. Have you noticed that you don't let your kids hang around with little juvenile delinquents? If a little Johnny down the street's a weed head, you don't let your kid run with little Johnny because you'll have a weed head in your house. We know this, so they come home with that month on them, and you're going, where'd you learn that? That's hope you get it and become the person you used to hang with. Like the people you hang around with, you read the books they talk about. Charlie Tremendous Jones said, 5 years from today, you'll be the same person you are today, except for the books you read and the people you meet. Don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Studies have shown that over 10 years, your income will be approximately and will become within 10 to 20% of the average of your 10 closest friends' income. Because you have the same habits they've got, you have the same diet into yourself that they've got. He is teaching about how he put boundaries. For example, to his daughters, teaching them how to carefully choose men that they are dating because it can affect their future and how they make decision making, even in things like this. If he can keep establishing it with them, he can teach them how to pick a good man to date. And now we can look at them, they both chose a good one. They both married good men and he got sons-in-law that are fantastic and it wasn't an accident. He is saying you need to make these choices very, very carefully. The fourth thing is you need to save and invest. In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil. Smart people save money, that's what this means. So it was used in the marketplace as used green president's faces as a medium of exchange. If you had a carafe of oil, you were ready to do business. It was a sign of wealth. 
there were two classes of people, poor people and rich people. Most of the people were poor people. This is the Mediterranean we're talking about. They ate hummus and olives, no meat and a little bread. Maybe a fish if they got some meat. That was it. Rich people are those who eat what we eat every day. Spices, good meat, Charleston food scene, cooking it upright, that's fine food. Stores of choice food and oil choice. Food and oil are symbols of wealth. Let's read that again. In the house of the wise are stores of money. By the way, the rest of that one says a foolish man devours all he has if you spend everything you make. The Bible just called you a fool. He has been a fool as well. That opened his mind to decide to change. Wise people save money. How can he say that? We speak for an emergency. Grandma said it. She said, save for a rainy day, it's going to rain. You're going to have a car wreck. You'll lose your job. Something is going to happen and you need some money. People come up with all kinds of things that are emergencies. Something is going to happen and then you need to save and invest so you retire with dignity. Thinking about this, he is going to spend everything he makes and hope the government, which is well known for its ability to handle money, will take care of us. That is a crazy idea. We are not even sure some of them have opposable thumbs up there. You know what he is saying. It's just ridiculous, and we're counting on them in some whacked out way to come. They are not coming. There is no white horse. There is no cavalry. You must remember that you are in charge of your own destiny. That's a piece of great news. Most of us, if not all, are worried about the election. And he is not worried about the election because he made money under both parties. It turns out it wasn't up to them in either case. He has lost money under both parties, none of them sent him a check. They all just want money. They're extracting like a tech extracting blood all the time. That's all they do, and this is the deal. The last one is all about generosity. Mind you, this is all about cheerfulness. Generosity is not just a transfer of funds. Generosity is a spirit when you decide to be a generous person. Generous people are more attractive. They smile, they're not grouchy, it's not all about them. They're the ones that open the door. They're the ones when the grocery bag has the bottom drop out and your groceries are rolling all over the parking lot, they're the ones out there helping you pick them up. These are the people that, when they go out to eat, live a tip. It's a form of generosity. Generosity is a spirit. It changes your life, but it's awful tough to give. If you're broke, if you're in debt and you haven't saved any money, and you don't have a plan and you're not hanging out with other people who are givers, and so you have to change. You get to decide today. It will change your life. It will change you and everyone with your last name that follows you if you do these things. It is just so powerful and so unbelievable. Generosity is voluntary, unselfish giving of time, money, attention, or other resources. Generous people are especially willing to share their resources with others. Although a charitable gift can benefit the giver, it is mainly intended to help the recipient, and there isn't necessarily any expectation of a return. The term generosity characterizes both the act of giving and the spirit of the gift. Generous acts can be as dramatic as anonymously donating millions of dollars to a hospital or as mundane as volunteering an afternoon to an animal shelter. Generosity, especially anonymous generosity that probably won't be reciprocated, may seem irrational under evolutionary psychology. This behavior may have evolved to promote cooperation in uncertain conditions. The sorrows are more profound and the joys are higher. It changes everything and when you move this money piece around, it gives you the tools to be that in that marketplace and to be that for your family and to get this monkey off of your back and get that elephant out of the room because he has to go. Again, one way or another, you must make a decision today. You have to act now because no one starts with many. It will always begin with you. Little acts done faithfully with the right attitude can go a long way. That works with investment as well.